Aloha everybody from the YouTube channel. Welcome back to another video. Everybody here on Twitch, go ahead and say hello to your future self. Welcome to this video here where we're going to be talking about Steel Fortress. Now, I have released an initial video on Steel Fortress recently that kind of was a team that we thought and we came up with at that time that seemed like it was the best and it was working decently well. But I have found a team right here, as you can see, that is just working way, way better. Like literally, I have not failed yet and I've been farming it like the whole weekend. And I wanted to share this with you guys and share some of my thoughts on this particular team. So. If you guys haven't realized it yet, if you guys haven't gotten to Steel Fortress, good luck in getting to Steel Fortress. But the main and the biggest strategy for Steel Fortress is basically putting block beneficial. So I'm thinking I'm, I'm thinking I'm gonna I'm gonna still give you guys the same information and the same uh, tips about bringing two block beneficials because things can derp, right? Accuracy resists. There's always gonna be a chance that the boss is gonna resist you, right? But it's bringing in a team that can turn cycle and give you more opportunities to put block uh, beneficial block and winning the dungeon because once you put block beneficial you just win the dungeon i'm gonna go ahead and start a, a dungeon here so you can see how this works but instead of using uh before i was using the dark vampire lord it turns out that the dark vampire lord has very very bad ai and that's an understatement the dark vampire lord has very stupid ai so it's not using the s2 and putting block beneficial like i said which is the most important on the boss as often so i decided to swap them out and uh, I started using zinc, which zinc was doing the job a little bit better uh, But I recently, you know th throughout the weekend some people in discord told me hey like try out the You know try out some of these other block beneficial units like uh, Gina, right? And this unit has block beneficial which also is three turn cooldowns Which is the same as you know dark vampire lord arg and zinc They all have three turn cooldown with skill ups for their block beneficial and if you don't awaken her She only has two skills. She only has skill one that puts a dot which is I guess kind of nice for damage and she has skill 2, which is a strip and block beneficial. So because of that, her AI is pretty solid. As long as the boss has a buff, she will usually tend to use the S2, which is putting up block beneficial, which in, uh, increases your success rate because it, you know, decreases the chance things derp in your dungeon runs. So I'm going to show you the stats on this particular uh, unit here, Gina, and I'll show you the stats of all these units once again. But on top of having two block beneficials, I have started using Pang. Now... Pang is not really a free-to-play unit, but kind of is because she was recently an HOH unit. And Pang is absolutely amazing. She doesn't necessarily strip, but she reduces the uh, turn of uh, beneficial effects on your opponent and also increases turns of debuffs that are on your opponent. So this can help you to have, you know, your block beneficial for longer so your opponent doesn't cycle out or the boss doesn't cycle out, as you can see. And she also does kind of strip it's not a strip but it's a strip because it reduces any shield and any defense buff or any attack buff that the boss has from the towers or when you hit it so once you put block beneficial uh my pang actually here is uh to strip and get remove any of those buffs that it has because if the boss has no buffs at all uh it's gonna do no damage and it's gonna be very easy for you to successfully do the dungeons i've been farming this dungeon and it's been a very consistent i would say minute the fastest we have is whatever fast time the fastest time you see there is from this team and it goes up to like a minute 40 around there minute 30 minute 40 sometimes but typically i see a lot of like minute 10s minute 20 uh runs so this is pretty good and like i said the whole weekend very safe like i've been i mean i've been guilty of playing valorant this weekend played some valorant I've been grinding some valorant i've been addicted to that game and i've just been farming on the side and it has not failed at all so i think this team is very very consistent fran for the attack buff the sustain um, Lauren so that it can uh, defense break maybe even help with the stripping put attack speed slow and then after that you got Argon for the block but oh you got Gina for the block beneficial and then you also got Argon for block beneficial if anything miss and Argon for the damage as well in this team which works really really well and last but not least Pang which you know I, I just discussed and why she's so good but also she hits pretty hard and does uh, some nice damage I think you can interchange this, the, the leader skills in this team though. You can use attack uh, attack leader skill from Lauren. You can use speed leader skill from Fran if you don't have enough speed. And I'm just using crit rate so that, you know, my Argon and my, um, what is it, my, my Pang have a higher chance to crit, right? If I don't miss crits, I'll be dealing damage out a little bit more consistently, which also leads to more consistent runs. So as you can see, uh, the main thing you want to note is I did say that uh, Gina has a pretty solid AI where she will always use her second skill with strips and buffs. But that means that the boss must have a buff. And the only way the boss has a buff is when you attack it. So I have Fran going first. And if she attacks it, right, my Gina moving later will go ahead and use S2. But I decided to make uh, the Gina go third because there are certain instances where Fran uses S2, which is heal, or S3. 
And in those instances, the boss doesn't have any buff. So Gina may not use S2, right? She's just gonna use S1. So I put, I made the turn order Fran, Lauren, then the Gina, right? Cause then the Lauren is guaranteed gonna hit the boss. And it's gonna, you know, proc that uh, that passive to come up and the uh, the defense buff to come out. And then after that, the uh, the Gina to move to put block beneficial. And then after that, the R gonna come in to do the damage from the defense break from the Lauren. And then the Pang to strip whatever's left uh, of the buffs, as well as to accentuate my different debuffs on there and just to do some damage. And that's the general turn order and just of this comp right here, which has been working really well. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys the stats on these units again. Uh, now the France stats are, I believe, the same as before. Right, France, that's the same as before. You don't have to be this fast. Make sure she's first to move on your team. She doesn't have to be this fast. Like honestly, for PVE, I could I could I could like gut her for like 50 speed, right? And that'd be totally fine. Right? I think anywhere around the 200 speed is kind of nice, right? Even a little bit, you don't want to be too slow though, but you know, 200 speed if you just want a numeric number in your head, 200 speed, right? You can make yourself tanky, make sure your friend doesn't die. You could even give your friend more attack because she does heal actually a little bit more with attack which can add to more success, right? Less uh, less issues going on if you can keep your uh, your units at a higher amount of health. Next unit that moves on the team is the Lauren. Now the Lauren might have changed, but I think I actually made her worse. Yeah, I actually uh, ruined her a little bit worse to kind of meet, you know, a lower standard for dungeon runs because I was doing a DB12 video. If you guys haven't seen that video yet, make sure you guys check out that video as well for DB12 and those of you guys that want to get into DB12. But these are her runes, right? She's on a violent focus set. I would say for units that need to land debuffs, try to get high accuracy, right? I'm honestly 40 or more, but units that are primarily used for their debuffing or stripping, you really want to get a higher accuracy, like 60, right? That's going to just, I don't know why. I just have a, I just tell people generally like how much like accuracy, like a, like I say a good amount or something like that. But some people really want a numerical amount. So I'll tell you 60, go for 60, right? Just so you have a numerical amount in your head, right? Just got her kind of tanky as well, just so she doesn't die. Third unit to move on the team is the Gina. Now, the runes on this Gina, I don't recommend copying, okay? I'm just testing it out at, for fun because I think this might lead to why my dungeons are a little bit faster. A little bit faster is because I have her on damage. She's on an HP crit damage attack build, right? She's my damage dealer. Her skill one and her skill two does scale on attack, so she does kind of hit kind of hard, but it's not that, uh, that it's not that crazy. The amount's not that crazy. It just I just feel like it helps out maybe on the trash stages a little bit. Ideally, if you cannot do this um, this build, just go ahead and do a tank build. Like I said, your Argon or whatever other damage dealer you're gonna use is gonna be the main source of damage for your team. She just needs to stay alive. So because she's unawakened, and she does, so she doesn't have the third skill, she has lower base stats, you just wanna make her tanky. You can do easy build. Violent anything, violent focus, right? Violent anything, speed, HP, HP, speed, HP defense, go for high accuracy. And I take it back. The numerical number in your head of how much accuracy you should have is as she has here, 69. She will never miss block beneficial if you have 69 accuracy. Okay, don't quote me on that, but uh, yeah, 69 accuracy here. So she's kind of a damage dealer for me as well as uh, she puts that block beneficial, but as long as you get the block beneficial and she doesn't die and stays alive, you're gonna complete the dungeon. So this is definitely more of an advanced build. If you, if you wanna try to copy it for fun, you can try, but ideally tank. Tank, good accuracy. That's all you need. And the right turn order. That's it. Fourth unit to move here is the uh, Argon. Uh, the Argon build hasn't changed. He's on Violent, right? More damage and more turn cycling. So he, he has S2 up a little bit more often. And he's just damage build. Yeah, with some HP. You don't need that much HP as well. Uh, the runes are on him are decently nice. But uh, you don't need this much HP on him. You can even get a little bit less HP and you're okay. Yeah, he's usually pretty far from dying for most of the runs that I see. So damage build. Um, good accuracy, like I said. I only have 50. Right, I'm missing uh, 18 to have the perfect amount. But uh, I think 50 accuracy is not too bad as well since he's mainly that damage dealer there. has that secondary chance to put block, ben uh, block beneficial if you do miss it. And last unit on the team, like I said, was Pang. Pang's easy build as well, right? It's not even that fast. Last to move on the team, so obviously slower. Damage build, right? Whatever you want. Uh, I, I prefer Violet, right? The more chances you have to Violet, um, the less things can go wrong, right? If you miss, you have a chance to Violet, you can... You know, you can go again. So I think Violet is a uh, very uh, good rune set for a lot of these dungeons to reduce your uh, fail rates. So I got it on Violet Speed. Actually, maybe Attack Redemption Attack. Yeah, not even Grinder Roots. Attack Redemption Attack. Yeah, some good crit rate. Actually, 100 crit rate with the 90% uh, leader skill. Technically, yeah, it's 100 crit rate, technically. Uh, good accuracy, right? Because she does go through an accuracy check for the re reduction and increase of the, uh, of the debuffs. So you want to have good accuracy on her uh, as well. But other than that, that's it. I mean, I guess her damage is kind of nice. The, the dots kind of help as well to kind of get rid of the boss. But that's the gist of the team. 
Hopefully that helped you guys out. Like I said, these dungeons are so much fun. This update is so much fun because you can see everybody brainstorming, coming out with weird, wacky ideas, weird comps. We'll find out what the best teams are. We'll find out what the speed teams are. We'll find out some of the, the units that have never been touched before, like, like Gina here, yeah, that are going to be really, really good for these dungeons. Now, I think that this unit kind of being like a little bit of a wacky unit, right? Bringing a unit that is unawakened into a dungeon is is not really a mechanic that you would want in a game, right? You don't want people building an unawakened unit as a main, primary, best in slot choice for a dungeon. So because of this, right, I suggest you guys to build this unit as well because it's very good. But as we're all building these units and we're all using these units, I hope Comp2 sees this and creates or buffs other units that are not that used to have block beneficial so we can have other synergies and other units to help us complete these dungeons because it's just weird to have to build a specific unit like this and not awaken it just to do this dungeon and if if, it, if it's a for fun unit like some people build like unawakened water cannon girl for like necro right it's okay right it's a for fun unit it works well there but you know twins are already super good there it's for fun but if this unit is actually the best in slot and it's unawakened i find that just really really wacko and that's just, just a little bit off so comp to us has to make adjustments new monsters and new units with block beneficial so hopefully they do that and i think that'd be nice yeah, for the community to have other units uh being built and a wider range of units for block beneficial because there's not too many being used right now but hopefully you guys enjoyed this video we're going to do a lot more like this currently we're going to continue the series of all these free-to-play units and free-to-play builds for the various dungeons and strategies right the main thing you want to get through a lot of these videos that i'm making here is the strategies understanding the strategy to the dungeons will actually help you to maybe come up with even bigger five head teams that you maybe can share with the community as well but hopefully you guys enjoyed these videos we'll come up with some speed teams as well in the future which is probably gonna be a little bit more premium on your rune quality and stuff but um Leave those likes, leave those comments. Uh, like I've been saying, a lot of people that are watching these videos, you guys aren't subscribed to the channel. So do me a quick favor, hit that subscribe button. We've been up, we upload a video every day. It's been like that for the last couple of years. Uh, but we're actually going to be doing more than one video uh, every day for the next couple of weeks. So feel free to get uh, on there. Hit the bell so you get notified when those go live. Leave me your thoughts down below. And I'll see you guys in the next live streamer video. Peace out, YouTube.